set. All nods, head, head nod. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our sixth weekly press availability for the Alaska House Majority Coalition. Uh, I'm joined today with a very diverse panel from our coalition. Uh, to my right, I have Representative uh, uh, Gabrielle Ledoux. She's uh, representing District 15. She's our Rules Committee Chair, uh, a Republican from Anchorage. Uh, to my immediate right, Representative Jason Grin from District 22, an independent from Anchorage. He's our finance committee member. And then over on my far right, uh, Representative Sam Quito from downtown Juneau, uh, who's our chair of labor and commerce and also for ledge council. So we have uh, Alaska Independent, Alaska Republican, uh, two uh, Democrats here at the panel today, one on the conservative end of things and one on the progressive things, uh, end of things. So we have a, a, a just, just showing how diverse our coalition is and um, showing how we've come together to fix Alaska's economy and to protect jobs. Today is day 36 of the session. We're fast approaching uh, the halfway mark of a 90-day session. Uh, visiting us in Juneau this week, we have the Alaska Municipal League University of Alaska alumni and the Anchorage Chamber of Commerce. Uh, later on this week, we'll have Senator Lisa Murkowski addressing the legislature in a joint session this Thursday at 11 a.m. And uh, tomorrow night, we have a reception from the Filipino community. I just want to thank Juno for um, everything they do in welcoming the legislature to, to uh, Juno. And uh, the Filipino um, dinner is one of the best events that we have, and so I look forward to that. I also want to uh, give a shout out to Keegan Messing, who is uh, one of our figure skaters that competed in the Olympics this last, uh, uh, this last week. He placed 12th overall. He's from Girdwood, Alaska. Uh, he did uh, uh, skate for Canada this year. Um, I think his first Olympics coming 12th overall worldwide is pretty impressive. I look forward to him uh, skating in the World Figure Skating Championship in Milan, Italy later on uh, next month and see how he does. And with that, I'll turn it over to Representative Gabrielle Ledoux. Yes, I feel a little bit like it's Groundhog Day right now because uh, we're here again. The Senate is still talking about a fiscal plan which is only based upon reductions of the, of the permanent fund dividend. And they keep saying to us, hey, we don't need any other new sources of revenue. Uh, we can just do this without taxing or anything. But it's based upon reducing everybody's permanent fund dividend. And I think that's somewhat ingenuous because the reduction of a dividend is a tax. And unfortunately, it's about the most regressive way that one can tax, and something which is most likely to continue uh, the recessionary economy that we have now. Thank you very much, uh, Representative Grant. Uh, pleasure to be here. Yes, thank you, Chris. Uh, in House Finance, we are wrapping up the uh, subcommittee process uh, early next week. Uh, I think all members in the House would find that process to be fair and transparent and inclusive. Uh, so really motivated to get working on the budget uh, as soon as possible. And I think, uh, I think all members would agree with that. Uh, yesterday was the personal, uh, personal legislation deadline and was really happy to kind of get one more uh, before that, that deadline. Uh, this, this legislation I introduced is, uh, I believe, a critical piece of helping out the tourism industry, which is just a, a bright spot in our economy and something I want to keep that momentum going of uh, that, that large uh, private sector employer here in Alaska. Uh, this would create the Alaska Travel Board, which essentially, um, because of our fiscal crisis the last few years, we've told the tourism industry that we can no longer as a state fund the marketing efforts to bring people to Alaska. And so we task them with finding a new innovative way to fund those efforts. Uh, so I've been working with the Alaska Travel Industry Association, also working with uh, Senator Mia Costello on that bill. And so we've introduced that bill to create this new board that would uh, ask the uh, industry to fund themselves and fund those efforts. And uh, I think that it's a critical piece of uh, helping our, our small local economies small businesses, uh, but also just shows that uh, there's bipartisan efforts uh, to, to find solutions to uh, uh, some of those critical, critical parts of turning our economy around. So really excited about that piece of legislation. 
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Representative Keto. Thank you, Chris. And uh, I think one of the things I'd like to think about is in terms of our primary responsibility, our primary responsibility to the state of Alaska is passing a budget. And that's, uh, as uh, Jason had indicated, we've got quite a bit of work to do, but we're wrapping up on our finance subcommittees and we're moving towards getting a budget over to the Senate. Um, we have already sent a piece of that over and hoping that they send something back. Uh, but looking at the state budget, we need to still provide essential services to all of the residents of our state. At the same time, we also need to make sure that we're doing that and not impacting our economy negatively. We all agree that, uh, agree that we need to do that. Um, one of the most important things for us is to make sure that we have a balanced sources of revenue for the state of Alaska. Um, we cannot expect that oil prices will bail us out this time. Even if we do get close on oil prices, we do need to have um, a, a diverse uh, way that we generate revenue to provide state services. Um, we've seen in our budget subcommittees that we've already pushed agencies to uh, to the limit. We're losing employees, good seasoned employees, because we're overworking them. And we need to make sure that we're providing support for the state employees that are providing services to Alaska, as well as making sure that we're responsible in our budget. And I think that's something that we need to work on. Um, in this session, even though it is an election year. Um, I have two other responsibilities with uh, just thinking about the big picture. We also have Legis Council and uh, Labor and Commerce. In Legis Council, we have been working on a lot of internal issues. One of the issues that probably is a question that will come up is on the, uh, um, the uh, uh, sexual and other workplace harassment policy, and that policy is being worked on in a subcommittee. We expect to have that policy back before full ledge council um, in very short order. So we're looking forward to that. The work going on is very important and is taking a little bit longer than we anticipated, but we do not have a situation now where we're putting um, any undue pressure on legislative staff or employees. Um, the other issue that I work on is in labor and commerce, and we've had this year a record number or close to a record number of sunsets that we've been working on. We've been working really hard on trying to get those over to the Senate. Those are uh, necessary parts of uh, our state government to keep things operating. I guess being an engineer, I do like to work on the behind the scenes parts and so I've been working really hard on, on those things. But uh, we do have a lot of work. I think we do have time to be able to get that work done. Um, it's a matter of trying to make sure that we can find common ground with the Senate. And before I turn it over to questions, I just want to point out that uh, our chair from District 38, Democratic Chair Ben Anderson Agamuk, has uh, signed with three names coming forward to the governor for the District 38 replacement. Those three names are Yvonne L. Jackson, Raymond Thor Williams, and Tiffany Zolkowski. And just a little bit about each one of those. Uh, Yvonne was born in Bethel and raised in Kasiglik. She has lived in the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta for 23 years. And she works for the Association of Village Council Presidents as a Tribal Workforce Development Director. Then we have Raymond Thor Williams. He's been in Bethel resident for more than 20 years. He's a member of the Bethel City Council and was mayor of Bethel from 2005 to 2006. He served on the Lower Kuskokwim School Board as well. And then Tiffany Zolkowski, she was born and raised in Bethel, Alaska. She is Yupik in Polish descent. She is currently Vice President of Communications for the Yukon Kuskokwim Health Corporation. And she holds a bachelor's degree in organizational communication from Northwest University and a master's in public administration from the University of Alaska Southeast. We hope to have a replacement sometime by the end of this week. And with that, we'll open up for questions. Please state your name and affiliation before you ask your question. Good morning, uh, Nat Hurst with the Anchorage Daily News. Um, curious if um, one or some of you guys could uh, articulate uh, why you advanced the early schools budget bill um, without any kind of a BSA increase for inflation? Well, I'll take a first uh, stab at that. One of the reasons why is because we're trying to find something that we can both agree on with the House and the Senate and the majorities and the minorities. And I think right now it's just, and that's I think that's what the governor put in his uh, proposal, his budget, but we just wanted to get the, the tough lift out of the way, uh, get that three-quarter vote out of the way. If we're going to get done here in 90 days, let's at least get stuff that we can agree on and get that moving forward first. Uh, so uh, it, it solves many problems. One of them is time. Second one is uh, the pink slips. You know, we didn't get out of here to June 22nd last year. That was very unfair for the districts who 
have to budget for their next uh, 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 their next fiscal year. And um, you know, we've seen where districts have had to have five different proposals just to try to guess what the legislature is going to do. We're trying to take the guesswork out of it. We're trying to give them something they can guarantee on and then have a foundation for them to know that when we get done with our operating budget, that at least they can be guaranteed on that. Is early funding that? Oh, sorry. Um, is early funding a more important thing for you guys to fight for than a funding increase right now? Thank you, Nat. Um, one of the things that we've heard, uh, especially from the Senate, is that they are very concerned about increases in funding. And while we recognize that it's important to make sure that we can try and keep up with inflation, there's a lot of pressure uh, within the legislature to not increase funding. We acknowledge that school districts are struggling with at least a 2.5% inflation, um, basically a decrease in funding every year because we flat funded over the last several years, in addition to about a 4% increase in healthcare costs. So um, five, uh, six and a half percent they're they're having to absorb every year which is resulting in increased classroom sizes which is resulting in pressure on school districts budgets we acknowledge that um, we have a, a situation here where we're dealing with um, a a Senate that is putting pressure on funding. And I do think that it's important for us to turn the focus towards trying to get to a fiscal plan so that we do know that we've got revenue. Um, and then we can have a real discussion about how to make sure that our education system is keeping up with the, the costs that our school districts are experiencing. And then last year, we saw Senate leadership wanting to cut 5% to the school, the school budgets. And uh, they had a very difficult time doing that. And uh, after session ended last year, um, even Senator Michiki said, hey, that was a very difficult thing to propose. And so uh, flat funding, I think, is something that we can get off the table quicker. Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. Uh, Senate President Pete Kelly introduced a bill yesterday that would uh, require Medicaid recipients uh, to uh, uh, pursue employment, volunteer service, or subsistence activities as a condition of eligibility. Um, interested in any of your responses to it? Well, I think that you'll find that most people in Medicaid are working Alaskans. They have a job. They're just uh, uh, very, I mean, unfortunately, they're in jobs that don't provide uh, uh, health care for themselves and so I think this is probably just gonna be a very narrow um, scope of Alaskans that this bill may affect because I, I you'll see that most people on Medicaid are working already I, I think just to interject this the actual number uh, representative Tuck said most but it's it's much higher than that um, you know statistics that 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 we've been told is under this bill about 98 percent of Alaskans would already be would fall under this umbrella and so I'm not entirely sure uh, if, if the uh, what sort of bureaucracy we would be creating just to uh, maybe look at these extra 2% of Alaskans and, and get them to be involved where they might not have those opportunities. And so um, I'm not sure entirely what the, uh, what the, if, if the, if the weight would be worth it. We'll see. Chris, can I weigh in? So um, one of the things that was not discussed in that bill introduction is the fact that in order to verify or um, oversee the activities of close to 160,000 Medicaid recipients, many of whom are children, uh, we would have to establish a state organization or division to um, provide that oversight. I do not believe that that would be Medicaid eligible, which means that that would have to 